I'm Rick Ritchie. And I'm Aaron Drogaseski. This is the Daily Move Challenge. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome, we're getting ready to start. Welcome, I'm ready to start. We're gonna go right into it with open books. We're gonna work some mobility in this cardio portion. So these are called open books. Aaron's gonna get down on the floor. He's gonna hug his knee here, this hand behind the head, and he's just gonna start rotating. So rotate back towards me, and then we're just gonna go slowly through it. He's gonna open up this spine right here. We're gonna give it a go, starting in three, two, one. Go for it. Give me that rotation. Now, the purpose of doing this rotation is to help open up the thoracic spine. So what happens in the spine? The thoracic spine, which is in between the shoulder blades, um, you've got little joints. They're called facet joints, and they're flat joints that slide across each other, and sometimes those joints get stuck. So when they get stuck, we need to create some mobility here, and lockdown thoracic spine can lead to lockdown in other joints around the body. So go ahead and switch over to the other side, and nice and graceful. So we switch to the other side, and what we're doing is we're just trying to loosen up those facet joints. These are also the joints you, you go to a chiropractor and they give you a little, right? Those are the sounds of those facet joints sliding across of each other, getting an opening, an air gap, and now allowing for range of motion. So that's what we're doing here, and this is gonna allow for the scapula to move well, it's gonna allow for the shoulder to move well. All right, now hop on up. We're gonna go into our inchworms, and inchworms look just like this. You're walking the arms out, walking them back, and coming upright. Our goal here is to get a stretch in the hamstrings and kind of all of the posterior chain, and at the same time, engaging the muscles that are in the shoulders and working the core. So Aaron is reaching out, popping right back up. He's gonna reach long with his arms, come back up. You wanna challenge yourself more, walk those arms out a little bit farther, and then come quicker, good. Grab your towel now. So your towel, you're gonna grab the towel, and these are called flaps. Um, if you guys have ever done, thank you. Uh, if you guys have ever done the rope drills, where you're moving those ropes and flapping those back and forth, the towel version of this is surprisingly incredibly difficult. So most people wouldn't look at a towel exercise like this and think that it's that hard. You're gonna feel it as we go through it. Flap those arms up and down. Careful not to hit yourself in the face. Good, single leg, standing on the right leg. And now we're just going into our runners. So the arms are moving up and down. They're going quickly, as fast as you can, control. Now the idea behind this is that we're working dynamic stability at the foot and ankle, at the knee, at the hips, and at the core, and still getting a cardio response by moving the arms. Now what we're gonna do in just a moment is Aaron's gonna step back into a lunge right now and he's gonna go into the lunge and he's still just working that body, trying to get the body to work. He's switching legs over to the other side so that the one that he was standing on gets a little bit of a rest. As we progress through the program, that won't be the case. And you're gonna start really picking on the same leg and the same joints and the same muscles over and over again. So as he rotates this way, he's now loosening up more his lumbar spine. So thoracic spine still getting loose, but then his lumbar spine as well. Good, now let's go right into the other leg. So back to the single leg stance. He's holding that single leg stance, allowing the arms to run. If you're having a hard time maintaining your balance doing this, that's fine. Feel free to tap a toe down to the ground anytime you need to, because as we like to say, better your foot than your face. So put your foot down, or just put both feet on the ground and do your arm runners. We're totally fine with that as well, as long as you are continuing to work. That's what we're looking for. We're gonna switch now right into the other lunge with the rotation. Now, when you do this lunge, for the purposes of today and what this lunge is, I want it to be like we're pulling you up from the top of your head. You're staying really tall. Some other lunges we do, we will request different movements from you, but this one, we're also trying to stretch the hip flexor, which is on that side of the body. So as he rotates this way, his chest is up nice and tall, he twists, and he's able to get that rotation. Good. All right, so we're gonna go into single leg dusters. So this is a duster. We're just gonna take the towel and move it back and forth like you're trying to dust uh, a towel or a, a, a floor mat or something. So going back and forth with these dusters on the single leg, you can see that again, 
We've got a lot of dynamics going on here. We've got the stability in the stance leg, stability in the core, and basically this double punch going forward. Switch legs, fantastic. The last 30 seconds, your last 30 seconds of dusters, and we're gonna wrap this up. Get those single leg dusters in, left leg or right leg, it doesn't matter as long as it was the other leg that you were doing, and try to stabilize this, try to keep it as smooth as possible. Again, don't pop yourself, don't pop anybody around you, and get the single leg stable going on. And now your last few seconds, I want you to punch them out. It's your last few seconds. Stay stable, put the foot down if you need to. So we're gonna take the chops down. We're getting the right side going down towards the left. But here's what I wanna draw your attention to. As Aaron is going through this exercise, look at his back leg. He's pivoting, he's rotating the back leg like this. The reason this is important is because a lot of times in rotational patterns when uh, our athletes do it or our clients do it, they like to just wiggle their hips and keep their feet planted. Now that becomes problematic because all of that rotation, rather than coming from the foot, switching sides, uh, rather than coming from the foot is actually then coming from the knee joint. And the knee joint does not like that type of activity. If this were a cookbook and you wanted to cook up exactly what an ACL tear looks like, this is the recipe. You doing this right here, planting, stopping, changing directions. But the pivoting of the back foot, that makes it a whole lot more safe uh, for you to be able to do these movements, protect your body, and to create more power. So Aaron's gonna drop down into his bridge position. So we go this, the bridge, and he's got the SOS going on, so his SOS arms, uh, he's got a ship offshore and he refuses to get up and still wants to get their attention. So we've got him in a bridge position and here's what we like about the bridge. Glute activation. We love glutes. So let's get those hips up, get them bridged and fire the backside. Pinch that uh, lotto ticket in between your cheeks, keep them squeezing nice and hard. We're switching over to the other side. And then as the arm goes back and forth, here's what's cool. You get all this wiggle in the body that we want you to stabilize, which means your core has to start working more, your hips have to work more, this frontal plane movement, this wiggle back and forth, we're trying to get it to stop. So just clench hard, hold tight, and get those SOS arms flapping back and forth, and then we are up. Good, so let's take it into our single leg helicopter. So helicopter, just taking it overhead. Now, single leg for a, a very good purpose. What we're trying to do is get the muscles of the feet to activate. So just the bottoms of the feet are gonna activate, around the ankle are gonna activate, and then around the hip are also gonna activate. Because you gotta think about it. If my hand is representing the ankle, it's a very highly mobile joint, as is the hip. So we want those two muscles working in concert. Now, taking this into your flaps, you're just going into a ready position. And we call this ready position. So just kind of like an active, uh, tossing a bas basketball back and forth, ready position. So he's in his ready position, kind of a, a quarter squat down and flapping the arms back and forth. When you do this, you may have already experienced it where that towel rolls back over itself. Keep it out in front of you, flap it away from you and then back down. Once you start feeling good about it, take off with it, really get them pumping. Good, so now we're going back to the helicopters on the other side and let's revisit what we were talking about before with the balance. We're looking at creating kind of a, a static balance but this dynamic balance is also being included in it because we have to stabilize the motion that he's creating with his arm in the helicopter. Now, yes, the shoulder might get a little tired, yeah, but the goal ultimately is creating strength at the foot and ankle and at the hip complex. Good. So let's take it back into the flaps, keep that towel out in front of you, and then flap it up and down. Careful, make sure there are no people around, make sure that you are not gonna knock over stuff off the mantle. Keep stable with your core and keep your breathing going. All right, here is now the challenge. Slowly build up to get a little bit faster. You got eight seconds. We are a bull ride away from being done. Come on, you can get this done. You got a few more seconds left, faster, stronger, harder, and then you can bring the arms down a little bit in their speed, but let's get this back and forth movement. We call these frontal plane lunges. Now, frontal plane is side to side movement. So we're doing frontal plane lunges, which means we're going side to side in these. Now, why is this important? 
One, weakness in the frontal plane. Most of us are very weak in what we call abduction, taking the legs away from the midline here at the hips. So we're just giving that strength. Good, so continuing going, we have 30 more seconds of this. As he goes back and forth, you're gonna feel a few things. One, you may feel a stretch on this leg. So the leg that's being lengthened, you may also start to feel burning in the thighs. All right, going back and forth, and these quads are really working. And then you may also feel in the hips because those are the ones shifting you side to side as you push your body along. Boom, Spider-Mans. So check out this exercise. He's going back and kind of into a really deep lunge. So his stance leg is his right leg, his left leg's going behind him, taking the inside of, uh, taking the outside of his arm, putting it to the inside of his elbow. And what's going on here? So it's several things. This is a mobility drill. Uh, we're trying to, to get um, the posterior hip of this leg. We're trying to get the anterior hip stretched out on this leg and pulling up into a high knee. So now same thing that we were going into here, now he's pulling up here and creating the same types of mobility but doing it from a different body position. So now he's doing it more upright. We're calling these high knee pulls and we're just pulling that right leg up towards the chest. Now, as he pulls up towards the chest, he's also given a little calf raise. If you wanna add that in there, please do. If you're not comfortable pulling yourself up and going into the calf raise, leave it out. You have to modify these for yourself as well. So now he's standing on his right leg and we're doing single arm runners. Now, if you're not comfortable with the, sorry, single leg runners. If you're not comfortable on the single leg, put both legs down and just give the arm runners. It's a great exercise doing just the arm runners, but you don't have the stability challenge that you'd have on a single leg. So we got Aaron on a single leg doing his arm runners, trying to maintain stability. Remember, if you need to put your foot down to balance yourself, put your foot down. Because uh, I always like to say, better your foot than your face. All right, so back into those Spider-Mans, stretching the hip flexor on the leg that's going back, the leg that's going forward. You're doing two things. You're doing the posterior hip, but you're also doing the adductors. And you can even take that inset of the arm as it goes against the leg and give it a little push too. So you abduct it a little bit more and you get more of the stretch on the inner thigh muscles, like uh, primarily in this position, your adductor magnus. Good. So. Going into those high pulls again, taking the left leg, pulling it up towards the chest, and then the right leg, which is the stance leg, is coming up into a calf raise. So now you've got these dynamics of exercise. You've got one leg doing an exercise as the other leg is being mobilized, and we're also focusing on stability. Keep your body really tall. So think about the visual of I've got a rope and I'm yanking that rope. That's what you want to feel like. Good. And now into the single leg runners, left leg is planted and the arms are pumping back and forth. Again, if stability is an issue right now, then back off of it, put the foot down, put the tip of the toe down, plant the foot down, or if you need to, just put the foot down when it's necessary. Less on the arms, more focus on the balance though, so that you really get what we are trying to pull out of you, which is the stability that you would need for this. All right, cool. So now we're going into this crawling exercise. So this is just crawling in place. Now, if you need to put your knees to the ground, do so. But preference is to create the challenge in this exercise. You're just on your hands and on your feet in this knelt position. The knees are gonna be close to the floor, but not touching. And your core is not moving. So there's no, as my kids would say, wiggle waggle going on. So you're picking up opposite arm and leg off the ground, trying to stabilize it. Cool. So going into your jumping jacks, talking about my kids, this is typical exercise. They do this in school when they have their recess time and they go into their jumping jacks and do the same thing. So uh, let's take it back to one of the things that we'd done before. We talked about the frontal plane moving side to side. This is where a lot of people in societies, not just our society, but societies in general are fairly weak side to side movement. So we like those because we like being stable in the hips. Good. Now, talk about stabilizing. We're going into a squat jump with stabilization. So Aaron's gonna hold this stretch for just a few seconds and then he's gonna jump and stabilize. Hold it, don't move, don't stand up out of it. 
jump. Land softly and stabilize. Remember, this is like ninja training camp. Jump. And loud ninjas don't get work. Good, next one, we're going into butt kicks. Uh, I optioned to try to have this done first because I wanted it to show what the rest of the workout was gonna be like, which is gonna kick your butt. Uh, Aaron said, let's put it at the end because I don't wanna do that much work in the beginning. So bring the foot back towards your butt. One of the things I like about this is that after you do all of the exercises and it starts to work your thighs, work in your hips, Aaron made a good point. He said, let's do it at the very end because it's gonna stretch out our quads and our hips. lunge or with a rotation. And why, porque, why do we do a reverse lunge with a rotation? Well, let's talk about how to do it first. Look at his body's upright. That's the most important thing right now. In the future, we will be doing a forward lean, turning that lunge into an exercise. Right now, this lunge is primarily design, designed as a mobility exercise, and that's what we're focusing on here, getting a stretch on the front of the hip, on the knee that's touching the ground as he goes into his rotations. Cool, so now he's gonna be chopping right arms up overhead, and then chopping down. So what we're doing in all of our uh, third versions of the extra moves is a combination of exercises that we've done from the primary exercise in the cardio and the other two extra moves. And then we just start putting together in a cool little combination for, for extra moves number three. So we're going back to that chop pattern that you've done before if you follow these in sequence. Good. Next one is Spider-Man to the right. So he's taking his left leg, putting it behind him, stretching his hip flexor on that side, stretching his hip extensors, posterior hip capsule, and adductors on this side. Also giving the leg, you can give a little extra push with that elbow, and what that does, it just draws the knee out of the midline a bit and gets more stretch in the adductor uh, muscle right there. So going into and out of this exercise does help to increase the heart rate a bit, but it's primarily for um, for mobility. Now, going into the inchworms, he's just crawling his hands forward into the push-up position, coming back upright. A couple of things to note because talking about this is kind of cool, but the most notable thing is if you come up and you start to feel dizzy, you might go down. So we prefer that you just bypass this exercise, find something else to do, whether it's uh, squats or something. Just if you get dizzy doing this and time, uh, don't do it. So now we're going into the next one, just taking it into flaps. Arms up and down, towel stays out in front of you. As you know, these towels have a tendency to roll over each other, so flap away from your body. And then as your arms start moving a lot, I see a lot of this weird stuff sometimes where people like moving their hips forward and backwards looks weird, so stop it. But also, we don't, uh, we don't get the stability out of the exercise if you start wiggling. Now he's going back into the reverse lunge with a rotation, but again, staying upright, like I'm taking something, I'm pulling the top of his head, so from straight up and down, he's being pulled straight up tall. Now, as he goes into this lunge, what happens, this leg being forward creates a tilt in the pelvis here, and that causes the front of the hip to stretch on this side. As he rotates this way, we get one of those major hip flexor muscles, nice, good, and loose. Now back to the Spider-Man's on the other side. Again, we're just going back and forth into mobility and movement, mobility and movement. So we're mobilizing the hip joints, we're mobilizing the muscles, we're getting stretched out, but then we come up and right back into it. So we start spiking just very mildly on this one, the heart rate, but if you wanna pick it up and go a little bit faster, feel free to do it. You don't have to keep tempo with us if you wanna push yourself, that's up to you and you make those moves. Now. Going into the inch worms again, it is a great shoulder exercise. Walking forward like this, it's kind of like a push-up position, but as you push back, each little push back like this are like little mini shoulder presses taking you back to an upright position. So you're gonna start to feel it in your shoulders. You may start to feel it in your core as you come out into the push-up position and then you have to stabilize yourself with this straight arm plank. Good, so let's go into the next one. And we've got our flaps 
for our last exercise in this five minute series. So you're four and a half minutes into it, already flying by, flapping that towel up and down, but keeping the hips very, very stable as you continue to do this exercise. Good. So as Aaron faces towards me, I like to just sit back and enjoy it, right? Uh, but watch his hips and make sure that you're not getting this weird kind of air hump thing going on that you want to stabilize as tight as you can. Very good, guys. And what? I'm gonna keep going. Why? What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, guys, remember to move a little bit every day because a little bit of something is better than a whole lot of nothing.